Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning. For Thursday, December 8th, I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Peach Bowl against Georgia is in 23 days. The game against Michigan in 352 days. The transfer portal has only been open for three days now. Already things are getting pretty crazy nationally. As, as of the time we're recording, only two Buckeyes have entered the portal so far. Safety Jalen Johnson and linebacker Taraja Mitchell. It is likely that business is going to pick up on that department sometime after the season, whenever that is. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. But, you know, with some uncertainty with this year's Ohio State re- recruiting class, as I talked about with Mark Givler on yesterday's show, Ohio State may be in the market for a bigger class of transfers in this year than they might have been in a normal year. So what are the biggest areas of need for Ryan Day's team in the, par- in the portal? Tony Gerderman of Buckeye Huddle is here to help me break that down. Tony, I feel like many Buckeye fans would tell you that some to most of the secondary is a potential area of need. I kind of feel like I would maybe agree with them. What do you think? Well, I don't I don't know if you remember seeing the Michigan game a couple of weeks ago and seeing what happened to the Ohio State secondary in that game, Tom. Even if all of the starters returned, wouldn't you want a little bit of help in, in uh, maybe some reinforcements there based on what you saw from the Ohio State secondary? But I, I think, and we know Ronnie Hickman has already said that he is planning on leaving for the NFL. So, you know, there are there will be some guys to replace. Cam Brown leaving as well at corner. Tanner McAllister leaving at nickel. So you're losing somebody at each each level of the secondary. So, so yeah, I think there's there's room there to grab – somebody or some buddies best available type of thing, regardless of position, I think. Yeah. And the interesting thing with the safeties is you have a bunch of guys who have really not played a whole heck of a lot yet. I mean, they were excited about Jansen Dunn when he came in and he hasn't really played yet. Sonny Styles, you've seen a little bit, but is he going to end up at a safety or a linebacker spot or some kind of a hybrid? You've got, you know, guys at corner, they've, they've shuffled through, Five different starters at corner this year, and you know, you're, as you mentioned, Cam Brown is leaving. At this point, with you know, with anyone, you can you can ask like, who's going to leave in the portal? And the answer is, I I don't know. Like, I, I don't expect thirty guys to leave, but they might lose ten players in the portal or something like that. That's probably not crazy to think. So yeah, you can you could see just about any position ending up as a position of need. But yeah, corner corner does feel like one where there are some names in the portal that would maybe be intriguing to Ohio State. That that I think would probably be number one on my list. But, you know, that nickel spot, they brought in a transfer there last year in Tanner McAllister. I, you could see them potentially bringing in someone else if they're not totally comfortable with whoever else they'd be rolling with next year. Yeah, and you look at what Tanner McAllister was able to do for the Buckeyes at that nickel spot shows you how important that spot is. and. Cam Martinez has played a little bit and has struggled at times this season. Played a little bit back in 2021 and played played well at times and struggled other times. Hasn't really found that consistency yet. And you know, can they move a corner to one of the, to that nickel spot? Is it and and if you do, is it your fifth best corner, meaning your your worst or your second worst corner? You know, quote unquote worst best to handle that spot, or is there somebody out there that you like that? Can do it, and there's a uh, th- there are some corner targets out there. Ventrell Cypress from Virginia, who is in the portal, I think twenty four sevens top ranked guy in the portal. Ohio State is certainly looking at him, but I, I also think that I think we would both agree they like who they have coming back at corner. But can you rely on any of them to be healthy for an entire season when none of them have been yet? And you know, did Den- did Denzel Burke regress? I think people would say that he did. Um, so I think there are some question marks at corner that a veteran would help shore up and maybe bring everybody else up with him. You know, and, and I think uh, competition is is certainly healthy at that spot. A healthy a healthy competition, Tom, with everybody healthy, <laughs> would be healthy. Yeah, healthy is definitely the key word there. I mean, they would have, even without Canberra, and they would have four guys back who had starting experience this year, but those guys had starting experience because no one could stay healthy. Jordan Hancock missed all of the summer and kind of the first half of the season. J.K. Johnson missed most of last season and then played kind of on and off throughout the year this year. Jerry R. Brown was kind of forced into duty, and Denzel Burke missed time this year. And so, yeah, that is that is definitely, health is the key word there, and 
an extra body, you know, quality depth is turning into something of a luxury in the college football game at this point. And if Ohio State could build some of that at corner, that would be a very big deal. Uh, another spot that I think you got to keep an eye on is the offensive line, where you assume Paris Johnson is at least thinking about the NFL. Dwan Jones could go after this year. You're probably getting Donovan Jackson back. You're probably getting Luke Whipler back, but you could potentially get Matt Jones back as well. But that still leaves a couple big question marks, and those question marks might end up being outside if because you're losing both tackles, and you could shuffle some guys around. But you know whether you know you kick Donovan Jackson out, well then you get to fill a guard spot. So you know whether it is guard or tackle, the offensive line seems like maybe the second, I guess third, if we're counting you know safety and corner as numbers one and two. Offensive line feels like, you know, the number three obvious spot where they could be looking for someone in the portal. Yeah, and in an ideal situation, and really you can't project something ideally on the offensive line, ideally Matt Jones comes back, plays right guard, Josh Fryer is your right tackle, Donovan Jackson is good enough to slide out to left tackle, and Enoch Vamahi is your left guard, and you've got five experienced guys taking over. Donovan Jackson was an all-Big Ten guard this season, I I think those who watch closely would maybe disagree with that. And, you know, he is a, he was expected to be very good this year, and he was at times, struggled at other times. So do you really want to move him now, or do you want to allow him to solidify at left guard and become what everybody thinks he can become and everybody thinks he can be very, very good? Or do you use his athleticism and his ability to kick outside because you don't have anybody else there, and maybe the guys in the portal – are staying south or that they've already landed somewhere. So I think it may depend on what happens in the portal as, as to what you do with Donovan Jackson. Cause I do think if they could get a left tackle, go and do that, go and do it all day long. And if you can't now you're, if Donovan Jackson can't play left tackle, who is your left tackle? It's, it's uh Zen Mahalski. Is it uh, George Fitzpatrick? Like is, these are guys who have not played more than, I don't know, 15, 20 snaps in their career, and you're going to throw them out there at left tackle for a new quarterback. So, um, you know, that's that's not ideal. Yeah, they have guys that they like. They have guys that you hear positive things about. But I think we saw kind of where where the rubber meets the road this year. When Matt Jones was out against Michigan, they played Enoch Fumahi for like a series or two. But it really feels like the circle of trust is maybe about six, six and a half guys deep there uh, on the offensive line. And if you're losing Paris Johnson and you're losing Dewan Jones, you know, even if you do get um, Matt Jones back, you're still at those five guys. And if anyone gets hurt or anyone doesn't pan out or a position move doesn't work exactly as you'd hoped, you, you know, you're you're getting down to these in Mahalski and George Fitzpatrick type of guys. And, you know, we'll we'll see how that all works. Offensive line development is typically, you know, that is typically one of the most difficult positions to project development. You will have guys who come in five stars and just never pan out. And you will have guys who come in, you know, the, the Pat Elfline type guy who comes in like the 1,000th ranked player in the country and turns into a longtime NFL starter. So that is a difficult position to project. And anytime you're shuffling guys around, that's always a little bit of a concern. So, yeah, you look at, you look at how Jonah Jackson impacted Ohio State as a transfer when he came in as a guard in 2000, what was that, 19, 18, 19? 19. Um, you look at Ol yeah, Olu Olwatimi coming in from Michigan from Virginia as a transfer and sent and turning into a fantastic center for them this year. Maybe you pick it, you know, if you can find a, a good center or a guard in the portal, maybe, you know, you can, if it's a center, you kick him out to guard and Luke Whipler still plays center and you can kick Donovan Jackson out to tackle, but... Again, there's there's a lot of moving pieces here, but that's a spot where more quality depth feels like that's going to be a real, real need. Because, you know, I think that is a position where you're always going to have misses in any class just because of the difficulty of evaluation. And you start getting into depth issues pretty quick if you have a couple misses and you have a couple guys leave early for the NFL. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you don't have the quality depth that you need. And, you know, the that uncertainty with that position is kind of, it, I mean, pretty much everywhere else on the field with the portal and the NFL draft, everywhere around the field, you could almost say maybe they could take someone because it's kind of hard to know exactly what to expect at any of the other spots at this point. You know, running back, is someone going to go pro early? 
tight end? Is someone going to go pro? You know, is someone going to turn pro? Is someone going to uh, transfer? Is you know, defensive line? It, I mean, defensive line feels like a spot where they may end up. You may want to bring in another body. Linebackers is Tommy Eichenberg going to go pro? Is Steel Chambers going to go pro? I mean, even quarterback, Ryan Day has talked about wanting four scholarship quarterbacks, and he's only going to have three next year, even if, you know what, let's assume C.J. Stroud is turning pro. If C.J. Stroud turns pro, you're only going to have three scholarship quarterbacks there. Can you bring in a fourth guy who's willing to not, you know, not come in expecting to start? So, you know, is there one of those areas or more than one area where you think they may get into a number crunch and want to bring someone else in? You know, somebody on the defensive line, I think a defensive tackle could be used here. They are losing three senior defensive ends with Zach Harrison, Tyler Friday, Javante Jean-Baptiste. And so you're going to go into next year with basically JT Tui Moloau, Jack Sawyer, and Caden Curry. And those are going to be your three. And you hope someone of Kenyatta Jackson... Omari Abor or some of these other guys uh, from the, the 2023 class perhaps can move in there. Mitchell Melton, perhaps. But I, I don't, I think a, a three headed monster is sometimes better than a five headed monster. And so the more those three guys are on the field, I think is, is they'll be okay. Defensive tackle, you need to r- roll through those guys a bit more because they don't necessarily have the stamina as others. And so you're going to be. You're gonna have you're gonna lose Teron Vincent. You're gonna lose Jerron Cage, and Mike Hall needs to be healthy. Him and Ty Hamilton, you think would be good enough to be the two guys at at nose tackle. Tyleek Williams is he ready? Is he finally ready? Is Hero Canoe a you know a young guy who's still learning the game? How ready is he? Like they they only brought in one defensive tackle in 2022 in Hero Canoe and. You know, I, I wouldn't expect any of the 2023 guys to be ready. Jaden McKenzie, I think, is still around in terms of he could be around next year if he wants to be. But are you expecting him to suddenly be? And he's a three technique anyway. So I think, you know, I think there has to be somebody on the interior that you bring in. And, you know, is it. And, and that's a really hard spot, because if somebody out there is really, really good you're going to have to pay really, really high uh, amounts for him at this stage in what we call college football. Because if there's a, there's a star defensive tackle out there, he's not going to be on the market for long. And that's not really Ohio state's game. Right. And Ohio state is not going to be the only team looking for a lockdown corner or a big body in the middle of the defensive line or a left tackle. You know, I, I would, I would assume a premium left tackle is going to be in fairly high demand uh, in the portal this year, that's that is one of those spots that you cannot do without, and so you know, Ohio State is going to be, you know, there's there's going to be some competition there, and it's not quite as easy as just saying, oh, well, I'll take one of these and two of these, and uh, you know, give me a box of those uh, those teas, and uh, you know, that it's not not quite that easy. You don't just get to make a shopping list, so that is uh, that is definitely something that's going to be challenging for Ohio State as they try and fill those spots, and just I think the uncertainty right now with you you know you have seen huge portal exoduses at schools. I think Alabama had 19 guys leave in the first three days, two to three days after the portal opened. Ohio State's had two. A lot of that you would assume is based on why would I leave before the season is over? And you probably had you know Nick Saban has probably had some of those end of season kind of conversations with guys. So Ohio State probably dealing with a little more uncertainty on that front, and guys not necessarily having NFL decisions made yet. So. Definitely going to be something that's going to evolve over the next month or so. And the portal deadline, the portal, the transfer portal window closes, I think it was January 18th, something like that. But, you know, that is just, that's not when you're going to have everyone. That's just the end of the window when you can officially, you know, put in your paperwork to transfer. So you're not necessarily going to have the answers on who's coming in at that point in mid-January, but you'll at least have an idea who's going out at that point. So. That was a recent rule change that will, you know, sort of impact how things might look over the next month or so. But it is going to be a very different, a very busy next month or so for the Buckeyes and a very busy next month or so at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We talked yesterday all about the recruiting thing. Early signing day now, less than two weeks away, 13 days away to be precise. Lots of drama there for the Buckeyes. 
lots of drama and you know potentially looming in the transfer portal, both heading out and coming in. And of course, a little bit of drama on the field as well as the Buckeyes get ready to face Georgia in the Peach Bowl. You can sign up today at BuckeyeHuddle.com to get access to our fantastic team of insiders, Kevin Noon and Tony and I, all covering the team, Mark Givler and Alex Gleitman on the recruiting beat, and of course our fantastic group of uh, X's and O's gurus covering the Ohio State and Georgia matchup from every possible angle, make you a little bit of a smarter football fan as well. So sign up today at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.